Are the Houthis Red Sea attacks predicted in biblical prophecy? Hmm. Hello, this is Chart GPT today. Yeah, so all this obviously in the news, the Mideast wars beginning to expand, wars and rumors of wars. So we kind of wonder, you know, is any of this predicted in the Bible? Of course, a lot of people think it is. But let's first look at what's going on at these uh, Houthis rebels were. And it's not just the, the, the streets of Hormos, and there's been other uh, choke points in, in the world on this uh, geographic basis. There seems to be attacking the choke points, kind of like the sea gates of the world. And of course, here's a chart of the world's key maritime choke points. You can see there's obviously the Panama Canal, the Suez, which has effectively been a huge block, and then the Hormuz there as well. And maybe, and even in this uh, Strait of Malacca, where they've been having troubles there as well as they're trying to choke out there, that point as well with some of the uh, restrictions in terms of Israeli boats because of this recent Gaza Israeli conflict. So that these are kind of the choke point, they're very important because this is where a lot of the world trade goes through. Uh, here's the rise of the the, tr the global trade in terms of shipping, 1970s to the 20 about 2020, and it's almost grown by fourfold. Here's what the global trade is. 70% of the global trade goes by ocean freight. That's 70% according to this report. And of course, some of the road freight and rail freight are inland. So that, you know, sometimes it goes by ocean and then it goes by road freight. So you have to think, is this the last mile type freight? And that's why that number could be bigger. Both are important, but obviously ocean freight is, is one of the key elements to, for the global trade. And here's the reason. It takes longer, but in terms of cost, it's it's a huge difference. So it's a very important. And as far as protecting that, the U.S. and shall we say the West, you see here the, the major powers in the world. The United States, obviously, it was the United Kingdom. Russia was in there a little bit, but they, they weakened. But today, it's mostly the U.S. And you can see here the number with the 11 aircraft carriers compared to everybody else. I mean, it's U.S. basically dominates the sea in protecting these straits. And so there's maybe some justifications for this attack. Uh, against Yemen and these Houthis uh, rebels that are basically blocking the Suez, which is a major choke point in terms of trade. So getting into whether or not uh, this is a, was biblically predicted, first thing you need to understand, and these, these seaports, and again you look at the description box on the post link, describes what the AI says is a choke point, and a little bit more on the on ref references about prophetical duality, you can see that w sometimes there's, there's an, a, a current event and then there's a future event. So sometimes people, well, this prophecy hasn't occurred yet. Well, maybe, maybe there's a duality of that. And so that's a very common theme through the biblical writings. So understanding this duality of, of prophecy, there's one uh, prophecy that was a promises to Abraham. And some people think it was only strictly to Jewish people, which is the tribe of Judah. But then there you have to also conclude the lost 10 tribes of Israel, who they are, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But even if you expand that larger, we have the Judeo-Christian uh, cultures that perhaps make up part of this Western alliance of which was receiving the promises of Abraham. So the prophecy, prophecy was that they would be blessed, multiplying. I see if you read further, there's some references there where you talk about the riches and the knowledge towards the end time would be received. Uh, the blessings of Abraham would be received. And the key point that I wanted to point out was that the seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And so the West has basically dominated the global trade and the, the, the major ports. So the ports is a quite of a key thing in biblical reference. So that Western alliance today, U.S., U.K., and the Commonwealth nations of U.S., that's Canada, Australia, New Zealand, et cetera, et cetera, Israel is part of that, and a coalition of the willing. So it's not necessarily genetic, but it could also be a spiritual house of Israel, i.e., the Judeo-Christian Western Alliance controls the seaports today. But prophetically, what God give us, God can take away. And the warning is that if you don't hearken unto God, he will punish you seven times more for your sins and break the pride of your power. Of course, we saw the pride of the power of the Western Alliance is very strong. But have we slid into Sodom and Gomorrah? Have we lost our way? Have we become corrupt? Maybe we're going to get spanked because we haven't focused on the morality and, and the societies that we should. Of course, as a subnote to that, in Jeremiah, this talks about how he will bring my people Israel and Judah, which is an interesting point, from captivity restore them to the land I gave to their ancestors to possess. 
So perhaps we're going to go through a period of spanking, so to speak. The West is going to have to learn to get back to the basics and because of the corruptive nature we've lived in. So maybe not specifically this Huidi's attack in the Red Sea is specifically mentioned, but it is mentioned that the West will decline in its power and get its pride taken away from. So all these different choke points has been prophesied to be eliminated over time until perhaps the West understands that the decline in morality into modern day Sodom and Gomorrah is rectified in some way. Do you believe that? Is that true? Go to the post link in the description box and take our online poll. Are we living in the end times? Are we nearing Armageddon? Has the West lost its way and that's why these attacks are growing in, in frequency and severity and scale? In any case, watch and beware and don't forget to subscribe.